studying about threat and vulnerability and uh, what are threats and what are vulnerabilities and what are the differences between these okay so another term that we have uh, seen is risk so I'll, I'll discuss the that in detail in the uh, after security okay? so we have seen a little bit a uh, little bit introduction towards the risk and we have seen that there is a differences there are differences between uh, threats and security okay so the mainly difference between the threat and security uh, threat and a vulnerability is that threat or uh, threats are mostly uh, intentional and vulnerability are unintentional okay and uh, you can easily deal with the threats uh, uh, with the help of antivirus because they are well known and there are already documentation exists but for vulnerability you have to try you have to hire a security engineer that can do a penetration testing for your software or any kind of a <clears throat> or any kind of a system that you have built okay another thing that i before starting this particular uh, lecture i want to tell you uh, that uh, there is one a particular evaluation component in which i have written assignment uh, slash certification okay so that particular component has around 10 marks okay so uh, we have been uh, we have we have two courses okay so for first is certified network uh, defense essentials and then there is a network defender okay from easy council okay so again with the, uh, we have been in the uh, we we are talking with EC council that you should you guys should get a particularly full certification with the exam as well okay so this particular certification cost us uh, some uh, there are some cost like it will be around 7000 and 8000 so for student it is free so we are in the talks of that so after at the end of this week i'll again uh, let you know about all the certificate courses that are being available to us and it is free of course to you guys okay so keep that in mind we the university will bear the expenses of these courses I'll most definitely be talking about certified uh, network defender. Okay, so the <coughs> most of the topic that will be covered in this particular course will be covered in our course as well. And at the end of this course, it will be uh, uh, this course will have a certain timeline. After that, there will be a certification voucher, uh, a certified exam voucher that will be given to you so that you can uh, particularly get certified in this domain. Okay. Keep that in mind. Uh, this particular certification uh, course will bear some cost. So again, it is <coughs> it is expected from you that you will you have to pass this particular exam to get in order to get certified engineer, certified network defender. Okay. So first of all, uh, keep that in mind. This particular course uh, <coughs> will give you a lot of resources. And if you do the resource, the certification from EC Council, uh, you will easily get uh, a job in the security market. Okay, keep that in mind. These courses uh, that are being available with EC Council are best in class, and again, the resources that are being available with it are also best in class. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> again, uh, assignment and slash certification i have given 10 marks and you have to you all have to do the certification in this particular regard and if anybody is not able to complete or any any kind of a thing happen so again i will provide you particularly either you have for assignment either you have to do a research paper or uh, if uh, or not or you can do a particular kind of a project okay so if you do not want to do the certification again that expenses will be bear by the university do not have to spend a single penny but if you are not interested in certification you have to either write a research paper that is published that will be published ready in any kind of a conference security conference and then there will if you are not interested in research paper you will be you have to submit a project and you have to uh, consult with me that which particular project you want to submit i will give you project ideas so that i will be guiding you as well don't worry okay so these are the <coughs> option available to you but i think this is the best option because this will again give you a certain edge in in security as well as you are from 
a cyber security background so this particular thing will help you in jobs as well because every any kind of a security engineer if they want to get into the security market they have to be certified and the certifications that are offered by ec council are best in class okay that is why i am saying that this is the lucrative option if you do this you will get a lot of knowledge as well you will also get a certification so for exam there will be different vouchers that that will be given to you by me so don't worry about that part okay so i'll recommend all of you to do this certification but if anybody is not uh, not willing to do it just let me know so i'll, I'll uh, arrange for these kind of assignment like i will give you a topic of research paper as well as i can give you a project topic as well okay so now uh, <clears throat> continuing with security engineering can you issue these uh, courses yes yes please when will you issue the courses by the end of this week because there are two or three courses i'll shortlist those uh, based on it and i'll uh, that is very very close to system and network security so that uh, most of the resources will be covered in this particular lecture you do not have to study extra okay <coughs> okay now uh, <coughs> coming back toward the security engineering so there are specific task that is related to being a security engineer okay so again i'm repeating myself again that you cannot be able to unlist or discover all the vulnerabilities that lie in the system you can reduce the risk okay you cannot uh, completely eliminate the risk but you can reduce or mitigate so mitigate means reducing the risk assessment part okay so that that is the particularly job that is the main job of a security engineer okay so this uh, there have been some uh, guidelines that you have to follow uh, to get <clears throat> so that there will be a security analysis that is being done completely okay so good security engineering requires only four things four things are there should be a policy mechanism assurance and there you should be an incentive okay so what is the meaning of each for each and every one there so policy will be that you are uh, saying that this is a particular workplace policy that if you are going into a restaurant uh, you should not bring outside food so that is like a policy okay so you can establish a policy uh, <clears throat> for a particular org organization the policy is like that no one is able to uh, bring out the pen drive okay so most of the time the security many security uh, industries have this particular policy that they cannot uh, that they cannot bring bring in and out a particular storage device such that the industrial secrets can be can be <coughs> copied into that because if you if you are revealing or giving any kind of a mail outside this will be particularly monitored by the uh, <coughs> But this will be particularly monitored by the industry. Okay, so if you are uh, revealing any kind of industrial secret uh, with the help of an email that you are sending some documents in your email, that can easily be filtered out uh, by the uh, by the security system that is being being placed. Okay, so that is in place. Okay, but if you are that if you are uh, making a policy that no one is able to bring out the storage devices, that is one one particular uh, threat that. A vulnerability or a threat that you can protect against. Okay, so policy is that you are listing a little bit of a policy, thinking that uh, that these kind of risk can occur if you are not covering this. Okay. Another thing is there is a mechanism. Mechanism means that how are you, uh, what are you doing in order to protect your data? Okay. So mechanism means that you can you are using any kind of algorithm. You are using any kind of a security. you are using ciphers access control hardware temper resistance these kinds of machinery so there is already a mechanism exist okay so when you are uh, suppose you are leaving the building and there is a metal detector there to detect that if you are <coughs> uh, if you are bringing in some kind of a weapon or not okay so this is a mechanism you have the resources and you have the what you say kind of a machinery that exists there to or uh, uh, to uh, to adhere to the policy okay so policy and mechanism these are interrelated to each other and then there is assurance okay so assurance means that the amount of reliance you can place on each particular mechanism you saying there 
that if you have established a particular mechanism, it is 100% uh, correct. Okay, so if you're saying uh, if there is a policy that you are not able to bring any metal things uh, into the building, so for that you have implemented a metal detector outside the building. Okay, so for <clears throat> so for metal detector to work, there is a 100% assurance if there are metal detector present outside the building, no one is able to bring in any kind of a, a weapon or any kind of a metal weapon inside the building. OK, so that that means you are that that means the system is 100 percent sure. OK, so what it means that you any mechanism that you have placed, it is 100 percent reliable. It is not like that if you have placed a metal detector, it will not it will only work like uh, 90 percent of the time. It will only work like 80 percent of the time so that there is no use. OK, another thing is there is incentive. Incentive means that you provide motivation towards the people that is uh, governing these things. OK, so if there are. The motivation towards the people that are guarding. OK, so if you're saying here that there is a. Metal detector and uh, to operate that metal detector, there will be some kind of a guard that will operate this metal detector. OK, so there should be an incentive to that guard so that this particular mechanism should be done. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, done clearly. OK, so done properly. Okay, It is not like that uh, if you are able to bribe the guard and again, if you are able to bribe the guard easily and any any intruder can enter into the building with a weapon. OK, so that should not have happened. You have to educate the people. You have to incentivize the people such that they do their, that they do their jobs properly. OK, so a good example is that uh, <clears throat> Uh, now the system, the banking system is online, but at in 2000 and 2001, most of the people uh, that are not that are only used to the file processing system. They are only they they only use calculators or they only use what you say a kind of entry files and everything. OK, so after that government has said that we will move particularly the banking system towards online. OK, so the next step was online. So they incentivize particular employees that if they are able to operate computers, they will be given extra salary and they will be given extra kind of payment if they are able to operate computers. OK, so that is why most of the people have, have shifted towards online. So they are incentivizing. So they, they have made a policy. They have made a software that is a mechanism. And that particular software was 100 percent, what you say, reli reliable. That is the assurance. And then they are incentivized the employees to move on to that software so that they can use the mechanism that the tool that they have been provided. OK, so that is again, if you are seeing here, this this four steps are like what you say any any if you want to move any particular security if you want to do any particular security, these are the four steps that you have to keep in mind. OK, so policy is just like that. You are listing out the things uh, you think that if you implement these things, uh, your uh, your organization will be safe. OK, so it is not it is a theoretical part mechanism is that you are building the tools. OK, so building the tools to achieve the policy. OK, similarly assurances that that the tools that have been built by you are 100 percent reliable and then there was there is an incentive incentive means that you are incentivize the people such that they do their jobs properly okay so these are the four things and this is a particularly diagram that every security this is also referred to as a security framework and every particular <clears throat> uh, every particular listed out property is related to each other okay so if there will be a policy in place uh, only then uh, you can in incentivize people. If there is no policy, how can you incentivize people? Because with the help of a policy, there will be a mechanism and then there will be assurance and then there will be incentive. OK, so everything is related to each other. That is why it is referred to as a security engineering analysis framework. OK, other thing is if you take an example. So again, this is not like that. If you make a policy, you are 100 percent threat proof or 100% that will be no vulnerability. OK, so it's an example that is being that they are in 9-11 attacks that happened. OK, so there was a, already a policy that you cannot. You cannot uh, take any kind of uh, metal blades inside the 
uh, aircraft, but the policy was very, very weak. OK, so if you're seeing here, the hijacker success in getting knives through the airport security was not a mechanism failure, but a policy one. OK, so at that time, what the policy was that you can uh, take the knives with blade up to three inches. OK, so this is a bad policy. You should not any anybody should not be able to get any kind of a knife knife with any kind of an inch blade. OK, so if there is only a one inch blade that should also not be permitted. But the policy is such that the policy that is being for made. First was such that that it was a very, very weak policy. So with this they are able to. Uh, again, if you're seeing here that this particular three inch blade can be taken out by three people that will become a nine inch blade. OK, so if you're seeing here that you can assemble the blade in the particular aircraft and easily that particular uh, three inch blade can become a deadly weapon. OK, so another thing is that the policy is also there to keep the what you say blast and any kind of a guns and explosives of the aircraft. So this is a good policy. So they did this particular policy was the uh, the people did their job. OK, so they did their job. Uh, of keeping the guns and explosive explosive off far as we know. But if you're seeing here, this was a policy failure. So this is not a mechanism failure because mechanism is the tool tool that is being there to implement the policy. But the policy is not good. So that is why the mechanism was also not good. So everything is interrelated to each other. OK, so seeing here again, if you see there is again a policy because if you go into any kind of a air uh, airport, at the airport, uh, what you say, there will be shops that will be giving you any. Uh, there are alcohol shops. <laughs> OK, so if you are seeing here the alcohol bottles are permitted again permitted on uh, onto the aircrafts. Again, I will say if you're seeing here base bowl bats are now forbidden, but whiskey bottles are OK. OK, so it is again a kind of a policy failure that you are allowing uh, that you are allowing allowing <coughs> Uh, the whiskey bottle onto the aircraft. So that particular whiskey bottle can be again uh, can again take a shape of a deadly weapon. OK, similarly, there are some of the policies that are being listed here, but again assurance is always poor because many tons of harmless passenger possessions are consigned to trash each month. So there most of the time people are not like they they will be there for attacking, but because the policy is such that that you have to get rid of all the things. So many of the things that uh, that you go and think that this will be permitted on aircraft are not permitted and many of the things that will be thrown out of it. So we are the. OK, so this is again assurance is always for poor for these kinds of things. OK, so we are seeing here if you make a policy failure, everything that you do after will be a uh, failure. OK. So this is an example of uh, our terrorist terrorist attack. But if you're seeing here, everything should be interrelated. OK, so if there is one failure, another failure will always be occur. OK, so that is why it is divided into four particular framework. OK, so there, there is another example that I want to give you that that is the example of banking. OK, so banking do not have only one. There are many examples like a military base, but I have taken only one example because banking have the uh, not only have one phase, but it has three, four, five, six phases. OK, so first phase is that there will be a bookkeeping system. OK, so we're seeing here if there is any kind of a security attack on the bookkeeping system. That that means that you can uh, change the entries that that exist in the system. OK, suppose I have only 100 rupees and if I am able to get into the system and I can change those 100 rupees into uh, 10,000 rupees. OK, so that is only. Only a matter of just just getting into the system and changing the value. But if you're seeing here, how can you uh, how can you stop these things? OK, so branch book kicking system. How can you stop this from happening? OK, because if you're seeing here at the end of any uh, at the end of the banking day, there will be what you say uh, a kind of a calculation going on between the system. OK, so at the end of uh, I think the bank closes at around 5 uh, 4 a.m. Uh, 5 p.m. And at 4 p.m. there is no uh, 
there the customers are not in, uh, in, uh, allowed inside the banks okay so from 4 pm to around 6 pm there was some kind of uh, what you say uh, verification occurs that uh, that if there are these many transactions are there and these many transactions happened in this day so the uh, the amount of amount of money should be there this many money should be there in the bank or in the bank system okay so that that again i'm saying this because bank system has already uh, what do you say experienced a lot of attacks okay so they they are one of the robust system that you will find anywhere okay so bank banking banking management system are one of the robust system because there are so many attacks that have been conducted on banking sites but now they are they are one of the safest software is out there okay so first attack if i'm saying that you can get into the bank system and you can just change uh, a couple of zeros okay so i can add a couple of zeros i can delete a couple of zeros from any account but to safeguard these things there are already what you say particularly uh, <clears throat> uh, mechanisms that exist there to protect it okay so suppose if the first thing is bank booking bookkeeping system so booking book bookkeeping system is one of the robust system because it will be verified at the end of the day that that much um, that much amount has been created or it added in the bank that much uh, account amount has been taken out of the bank everything will be there so this is referred to as a bookkeeping okay so the main defense come from bookkeeping procedures okay so that have evolved over the centuries okay because with every attack we we evolved we evolved okay for example each debit against one account must be matched by a equal and opposite credit against one another okay so you're seeing here that if i am sending 100 rupees to any other uh, any other system so this is a and this is b so suppose i have total 1000 rupees and i am sending 100 rupees so that total amount that will be exist in my in my account should be 900 and if a b should have a amount of 1000 it should gain 100 rupees okay so if you are seeing here the wealth is not left anywhere so it is being transferred from one particular account to another account okay so if for if you have to check it you can easily check the bank account from where this particular 100 rupees is being transferred you have to check that at this particular uh, account there is 100 uh, 100 rupees should be deducted and 100 rupees should be added in the credit account so that is how you can make sure that whatever a has sent to b has been received and has been deducted from the a's account okay so that is very very important okay so money can only be moved within a bank never created or destroyed if you are seeing here there is no money created when you are transferring money okay no money created it is just moving from one amount account to another account okay and similarly if there is large transfer of money might need two or three people to authorize them so this is one another safeguard that is being put there because of several uh, several attacks that is being put on banks okay so if anybody is able to get large transfer so you have to authorize those transfer to two or three people from the bank okay so if you want to take around round 1 crore or 2 crore rupees from your bank account then there will be three or four people there there will be manager there will be a, a, another bookkeeper then there will be a clerk okay so for these people will again verify all the things only then they will provide you and every if you are seeing here at every level there will be access control so clerk is able to see a particular uh, particulars of a per, uh, if suppose this is a a people and it wants to uh, it wants to uh, get around 2 crore rupees from his account or his or her accounts so this clerk will be able to access some particulars of this particular uh, uh, people or person okay so it sees it can see that how much money is there in the account and how much it want to deduct okay so if this will this clerk will again send it to a little bit higher people like if it is sending to a manager the manager will have a different access to this people that uh, this particular person have op opened this account 
in this date and uh, this particular person is a customer of this bank for 10 years 20 years and he want he or she want to take uh, around 2 crore rupees from their bank account so these are the things that will be visible to the manager but will not be visible to the clerk okay so if you're seeing here there is again an access control between a clerk and a manager if you're seeing here this is one thing again the clerk will not be able to see the high level things that the manager does and if manager is again sending uh sending this for further authorization then again there will be another person and there will be access control that particular person will be able to see some of the things that manager will not be able to see okay so if you're seeing here these access controls are very very necessary okay so if clerk is able to get all the information regarding this maybe he or she can do a kind of a fraud that is uh, that is not uh, that is being done okay so the clerk can do a fraud if the all the information is available to the clerk because clerk can change the values of a system but if you're seeing here uh, the clerk has only uh, certain access to this person account similarly manager will have a certain access to this uh, particular person amount so that is why if there is any kind of uh, fraud happens uh, in a bank there will always be <clears throat> there will the, this will always be the responsibility of a manager or a higher person that authorize these things okay so that is why the access control between these higher authorities have been created so have any uh, any lower level person will not have access to un uh, unreasonable resources of a particular bank customer okay so if you're seeing here it is uh, the, this is one safeguard that you can put and there are also alarm system that uh, there will be in the bank software that is being put if any particular person is able to uh, is is trying to get a uh, large amount of money out of their bank account because there is internet banking as well okay so but we are not talking about right now, but we are only talking about branch bookkeeping bookkeeping system. OK, so uh, again, uh, another thing is that the staffs are required to take regular vacation during which they have no access to the bank's premises or any system. OK, so this is one of the most important thing. OK, so for, uh, there are some attacks that have been have been conducted that there was an access given to any kind of a bank employee that that have taken a vacation okay so with this uh, when any kind of a robbery or any kind of a fraud happens the the person can easily say that i was not uh, i was not in the branch so that is why i'm not liable for any of this fraud okay so this was this was happened in the bank branches so that is why they have created this particular security measures that they are not uh, that they're not able to access the bank software if they are not inside the bank Okay, so if you're seeing here, this is only about the branch bookkeeping system. There are being some vulnerabilities that are being taken care, that are being taken care by placing a safeguards. Okay, so this is one example. Another another phase of a branch will be its ATMs. Okay, so bank has a bookkeeping system as well as it also has ATM, as well as it also have websites also. Okay, so another thing is that it's also have messaging systems that are being there and uh, i'll tell you that how these things and what are the security and safeguards and being there so atms you can say automatic teller machine so there are so many attacks on the atms that the the intruder just tried to take the atm machines okay so uh, <clears throat> how to get rid of these first of first of the thing that you can first if there is no kind of a security measure that is being there in the atms any any person can easily take out the money okay so how can you defend this so uh, this was the first what you say use of ciphers there okay cipher means that uh, you can encrypt encrypt any kind of a uh, what you say system okay so if you are uh, if you have a card that particular card uh, when you uh, put this card physically into the system you will have to enter a pin okay <laughs> okay so this is referred to as authentication authentication means that it is a proof that you are entering that it is you okay authentication means that whenever you are putting your password in facebook or whenever you are putting a password on instagram they are they are sure 
they are sure that it's you. OK, so you may have seen that uh, this that 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 uh, many of the people call on your phones and they take out your uh, UPI money. OK, so what happened there was that uh, there was uh, so many attacks that this kind of attacks happen that you have to put your AP, uh, UPI pin and some of the money will be deducted from your account. So usually after two or three years back, there are these types of attacks increased considerably. So many, many people have lost their money. So they have gone to the court that saying that this is the fault of the bank that that because the system bank system is not very what you say robust that they have not they have placed a policy for it but there is no incentivization that is being given by the bank incentivization means that they are not what you say educating people to how to not enter your pins they are not educating people that bank bank person will never call you and ask you for a upi pin okay so that is that is why if you're seeing here after the supreme court decision all the banks are now liable to pay some amount but they are also being there for giving you information so so many messages that you have seen from banks coming that you you should not be able to give your pin to any people any person you should not be able to you should not be able to give the UPI pin to any people uh, by the, the bank staff will never call you and asking you for the UPI pin. So these are all the informational infomercials that are being uh, advertised by the bank. That is because the Supreme Court has said that you have to incentivize the people. You have to tell the people not to do such things. OK, so again, if there is a policy there, if you're seeing here again, security thing, that if there is a policy there, there is a mechanism there, there is assurance. OK, so all the things are there, but there is no incentivization. OK, it means that you are not properly teaching the system, uh, teaching the people who are using these softwares how to uh, conduct a transaction, how to not do a transaction. OK, so that is why if you're seeing right now, you will look get a lot of messages from banks that you should not click on any link that you will get from a, uh, on your email. So there are so much information that you will find. OK, so that is why starting we uh, the cipher thing. Cipher means that uh, encrypted text. OK, so what happened that if anybody is able to get your pin, OK, suppose you have uh, given what happened there was if if you give your pin to any people, any person, and that person is able to uh, have physically access to your uh, bank account or your uh, ATM card and that person is able to get the money out of the bank. Bank is not liable for that. OK, so if you are telling people your pin, the bank is not liable to pay any kind of a damage that is being caused. OK, so because you have bank has already said that you have to keep your pin confidential. So confidentiality is the first thing that you have to keep in mind. It's always there. Whenever they send you a ATM card, they again stress this point enough that the courier should be delivered to only the bank account holder. So that is the first thing that you have to remember. That is confidentiality. This is one of the main resource, what you say, one of the main concept that is being there in information security. OK, in system and network security, information security, that confidentiality. OK, so I'll talk about confidentiality, integrity and availability. This is CIA. This is popularly known to as CIA, but confidentiality is the one part that you have to uh, keep your pin uh, confidential. OK, so previously what was happened, there was something called phantom withdrawals. OK, so what happened there that you are any uh, in the countries, the the ATM was being exploited by by using any kind of a software, and they are able to uh, get the money out of the machines. Okay, so that happens. They have exploited some loopholes. They are able to open where the money is being kept. But again, there are there now we have a secure ATM. There has been a particularly <coughs> cryptographic standard where where you are not able to but happened there was that you you can easily able to just put a particular uh, number 
and you can easily get into the ATM network. OK, so previously what happened? There was no network security that is being given to the net uh, to this ATMs and anybody is able to get into the ATM network and they can easily take the money out. But after that, there was crypto standard that has been established and then these kind of thing uh, stopped happening. OK, only only what you say only vulnerability that still lies is that uh, the absence of a physical security guard. OK, if there is no phys physical security guard on the premise, they can take the uh, ATM machine out, but still they have to do a lot of effort for that. OK, another public face of the bank is bank website. So bank website is now being one of the most secure websites that you can find because we have implemented something called SSL or uh, TLS standards that these are security standards that you will find. OK, secure socket layer. Uh, these are the security standard that you will find. OK, so no one is able to break the no one is able to break your uh, what you say password. OK, so from bank website, it is just next to impossible that if you enter a uh, if you enter a password, anybody is able to see what you have entered. This is next to impossible because they have there are many safeguards there. First of all, the bank website is fully encrypted. Encrypted means if anybody is able to intercept suppose this is your computer a this is your bank server okay so you are going inside the bank server suppose there is some kind of a third party that is present there that is intercepting that is intercepting this traffic knowing that this particular person is uh, is uh, if particularly this c person is keeping a watch that you are accessing a web bank website but this particular person can never know that is this a bank website or not okay because it is so much encrypted if it downloads the page it will find something like this okay so it will find question mark comma b c some something like this if if it is able to intercept what you are accessing this will be the result okay so they are so much secure that if if there is any kind of a third par party person present they will not be able to see that which particular website you are accessing. OK, so they are only only how how can uh, the third party can get your what you say uh, your password is by something called a phishing attack. OK, so phishing attack is that they send you an email saying that your uh, that someone has tried to get into your account. So log into this page log into this page to change your password okay so when you log into this page that particular website will be will be seen a particularly that that particular website first of all which will http so that anyone can see what you are typing on it and another thing is that it will be very close to the original bank site okay so it will be very close to original bank site such that you will be trusting towards it okay so if it is very different from the original website you may see that there is a, any kind of a problem there, but it is very, very close to the original bank's website so that you can easily enter your username and password. You can just type your old password, then you confirm new password and confirm and it will say your password has been reset, but actually it is getting your old password. But nowadays if phishing attack is being done, suppose phishing attack is being done, and a particular attacker is being able to gain your password. OK, suppose this happens. I'm telling you that there is again a safeguard there that is two two factor authentication. OK, so now if you go into the SBI banking website, you enter your password again, they will send you a OTP to your mobile phone. OK, so again, the attacker can gain access to your password, but they can never gain access to your SMSs on your phone. OK, so again, that will uh, that will be another layer of security to break. OK, so that is why I'm saying that these bank website, uh, the present uh, SSL and TLS standards are such that no one is able. this particular websites are next to impossible to break. OK, another <clears throat> uh, another system is that uh, behind the scenes there are number of high value messaging systems. OK, so this is again one of the thing that that will occur between the local bank and and between another bank, so because HDFC bank is able uh, able to give some messaging uh, towards uh, its particular customer that this much amount has been taken out. OK, 
similarly if any kind of uh, any kind of a bank so if you are taking any kind of money out of your bank again you will be given a message okay after some time you will get access because of the bookkeeping system that is being uh, placed there for the first for the first firstly there okay so again the bank standards are not only using they are the first to implement the cryptography standards and uh, the cipher text and uh, the uh, cipher text and other things okay so i'll tell you about a uh, cipher text a little bit about cryptography and then there is something called a digital signature okay so digital signature is again implemented firstly by the bank system why why they are uh, why there is a need of a digital signature because what happens is that before digital signature there was something called a username and a password okay so if anybody is able to gain the access of the password uh it, the bank will treat that a particular person whose bank account is this is accessing the account okay so many of the times this is not what you called uh, a good security you cannot call this a good security because passwords are easily achievable and more at that time most of the third party hackers are easily able to get access towards this passwords because uh, the passwords are not following any kind of a standard uh, they are just simple dictionary words and if you place a simple dictionary attack anybody is able to gain access to the passwords at that time okay so uh, another thing is that that uh, the people that suppose this is a people he is entering uh, this is a person he is entering username and password and amount has transferred 100 rupees towards b okay after transferring 100 rupees to b this particular person is saying that i have not transferred the money my account is being hacked okay so now in this particular case who is being responsible okay so the bank have to return the money to this particular uh, person so this was a very big problem at that time around 2005 uh, and 2006 bank is facing these kinds of problem so they have uh, they have came up with a solution that is referred to as a digital signature okay so this digital signature is a concept of private and public key i'll tell you about it don't worry private and public key okay so they make sure that that if uh, if you are accessing a particular system the bank if you are uh, what do you say if you are able to uh, if you are sending 100 rupees to this particular person the bank has something called a digital signature there in there to verify that this particular person has accessed his particular private key to uh, to in order to uh, in order to approve this particular transfer okay so i'll tell you how this digital signature works and how the banks are easily able to verify that this is this particular uh, transaction is being approved by the account holder okay so this was the proof that the banks were needed and if anybody is able to say that i have not conducted this particular uh, i have not conducted this uh, transfer then they can easily show the digital signature saying that this is originated from your machine and we have this proof okay so i'll tell you about digital signature it's a very interesting concept firstly i have to tell you about cryptography and a little bit of a public private key okay after after that i will go with it okay so uh, <clears throat> these are the being the, these are the examples that you have been seeing here okay and on there and here uh, keep that in mind a security engineer the four things that we have seen the policy <clears throat> the assurance the mechanism and uh, uh, the incentivization okay so if any of these four principle if you are not if you are weak in any of the principle your uh, your whole security system will collapse okay now i we will study about the risk part now what is a risk how are the how can we lower the risk after that we will move forward with the digital signature and public private key part okay so i'll tell you about it. see if there is time so i can move forward with the topic i think the time is up okay so i'll, I'll discuss about uh, the risk part risk assessment part in the next lecture any doubt till here no sir okay so one thing is that your timetable is being changed 
so i think i'll, I'll schedule uh, there is a lab tomorrow i'll schedule the lab